Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to help me pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I'll pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from JI3A3. Not sure if your name is supposed to sound like something, but uh, that's how I'm gonna pronounce it. Anyway, he says, Level Cap Loadout. Use whatever feels best loadout for Conquest large. Play on a server that has all DLC in its rotation. Do not change loadout based on the situation. For example, the enemy team dominating with tanks while you're the assault class. Your loadout must be the best for any situation. So I could certainly call this the ultimate conquest tryhard loadout, although if I was really trying my hardest, I would adapt my loadout to the situation at hand, playing recon when necessary, assault when necessary, uh, engineer when necessary, and probably never support since it's never really that necessary. Now obviously most conquest large maps have vehicles, so I decided to go with the engineer class so that I could run with a rocket launcher, and I picked the small, which is my favorite rocket launcher in general, it's my favorite because it does good damage and the rocket travels incredibly fast, which means it can be used to hit low-flying aircraft as they fly past. And it's also good for hitting fast-moving vehicles. You don't have to lead as much or they don't have as much time to try and get out of the way of your rocket. Also, it can be used for killing infantry at long range. Those who are standing still and you know that you might not have the ability to take them out with your carbine or whatever weapon you have equipped. Now as for primary weapon, the engineer has access to PDWs, carbines, DMRs. These are all guns that I would consider switching between depending on the map, but since we're going with one single loadout, the ACWR seems to be the clear choice here. Even playing on this big snow map here, I can make it pretty effective, although I think I'd probably opt for a DMR considering the longer range engagements on average. I do run out of ammo with the carbine at points and have to switch to a pistol and even pick up other kits. Now, if you saw my video about four months ago that I did on the best carbine available, this was sort of an update to my previous best weapons video as a lot of things have changed. I went through all the carbines in the game, talked about some of the strengths and weaknesses of the good carbines, and ultimately came to the conclusion that I think the ACWR is the best carbine out there because its rate of fire is insane, its reload is incredibly fast, and if you outfit it right, it can still be very accurate, especially if you tap or burst fire at medium range and just full auto in close quarters, you can absolutely wreck people. This is a gun that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most assault rifles out there. As for modifying the ACWR, I like to use the angled foregrip to reduce a little bit of that initial kick, allowing me to tap fire a bit more effectively. Then I've got the Coyote sight on there for minimal sight housing. And then I've also put the little auto spotter on there as well, because it never hurts. It uh, saves me from having to spam the Q button, and it'll spot guys sometimes when I'm not expecting to spot somebody. This little device activates actually when you aim down sight with a carbine or DMR. I believe those are the only two weapon platforms platforms that you can equip this attachment on and it's nice it's nice not having to constantly spam the Q button although I still do it when I'm not aiming down sights the device I believe only activates when you ADS. You of course have the option to swap this out for a laser sight if you want better hipfire accuracy, but at the point when I'm going to hipfire my opponents down, I feel like the laser sight just really doesn't benefit me that much. I mean it could, but it's a matter of having to toggle it on and off in the perfect situation, and I always feel like I'm giving myself away more than I'm being helped by the hipfire benefits. That of course is entirely up to personal preference, and there really isn't a lot of statistical data to back up how much laser sights give away your position versus not giving away your position. Now as much fun as the ACWR carbine is, it's really more of a medium to close range weapon and even at medium range it's not necessarily the best choice out there. It can certainly work if you get a good couple of bursts off, you can down people very quickly, but if you mess up your recoil compensation even a little bit, your time to kill is going to go way through the roof with this weapon. So you really have to play aggressively with the ACWR, getting on those points and that's a very important part of Conquest anyway. Usually when I play Conquest, I'm always charging points, so it certainly doesn't hurt running with the ACWR. And check out this ridiculous cruise missile kill. I think he got five kills on that impact right there. And I try and mop up the remaining guys, but there's just a few too many of them, and I just don't have enough cover to uh, stay alive long enough. 
This gun certainly gives me a huge advantage in close quarters over most people in a one-on-one -on -one fight, but when you're up against multiple opponents, you have to try and bring them in one at a time, otherwise you're always going to get out damaged fighting two people at once. Now I've got a crap load of kills with the SMA. Definitely got a mastery dog tag with the SMA, which is over 500 kills. I mean, that's from blowing up vehicles, but also just hitting guys long range with it. I mean, it's so incredibly good because the drop on it is so low that you can almost aim directly at people or just a little bit over their heads. And I've killed plenty of snipers and plenty of people standing stationary, which is a good lesson to not stand stationary in this game. You'll see me rarely stop uh, completely in this game unless I'm like in a house or in a corner and just trying to cap a flag down and I don't think anybody can see me from long range. Otherwise, I'm always moving, always kind of dancing back and forth, trying not to become sniper food. And again, I managed to snag a long range kill there as it doesn't make sense to try and waste carbine bullets at that range. Chance Chances are your opponent's going to take some damage from you, but you won't be able to finish them off and then they can go take cover and sort of anticipate your attack or try and thwart you. So even if you have the advantage on your opponent, it doesn't make a lot of sense to try and long range them with this weapon. Close the distance so you can kill them fast enough with the carbine or hit them at long range with the small. Now the secondary gadget that I picked is the repair torch as any conquest game mode you're probably going to need to repair friendly vehicles or you can use it as a way to take out enemy vehicles as well. Also if somebody hops out of their vehicle, the enemy, then you have the ability to repair that vehicle to full health. I see this happen all the time in Conquest. Somebody's down to like 10% health with their vehicle, they think they're about to die, they jump out, we get them down and then you can just repair it back up to full health and now you've got the enemy team's vehicle. This is something that really outbalances a lot of games and uh, most pilots or drivers should really go down with the ship. If you're tanks about to die and you're surrounded by enemies just die with it and you will be doing your team a huge favor now this out of service elevator shaft here has always been a weird point of contention and uh, it's actually really hard to climb up the elevator shaft but dropping down can be a little bit easier. Granted, surviving this engagement here, I feel like I probably should have died, but when it works out, it's kind of awesome. And now we get to backflank C point. Also, never be afraid to mix your small or RPG, whatever rocket launcher you have, into close quarter infantry combat. It's a one shot kill. You can also shoot it at the ground right next to people to damage them down. Um, and it's just a great way to sort of alternate if you want to use it as a way to sort of get your initial kill and then immediately switch to your carbine to deal with multiple threats, it's very, very effective because trying to gun down two people at once takes a little bit of time and you're often going to get killed by the second guy or third guy and you just have to expose yourself for too long where the SMA allows you to get that initial kill right away and then you can use your carbine to clean up the remaining targets. And for those of you who are annoyed by people who run SMA primary at times, well, you don't have to be worried about it in Battlefield 1 as there's not going to be any more rocket launchers in that game. You have the AT rocket gun and you got to go prone to shoot that one and it's going to be way more difficult to run that as a primary or anti-infantry weapon. It can still be used as such, but it's just going to be way less useful than an actual rocket launcher. Now as for the sidearm in my ideal loadout, I go with the 93R. The G18 is also a great sidearm. I feel like I can do equally good with both pistols. For whatever reason, I kind of gravitate towards the burst fire mechanics of the 93R. And I'll usually put a laser sight on that one because I'm almost always using it in hip fire mode. Uh, and I'd like the hip fire accuracy benefit. As for my squad perk, I often run defensive. Otherwise, sometimes I run offensive if I want that extra speed and ammo. But if I'm really try hard then I'll definitely run defensive just for the extra tank ability. Even if it is a very, very small percentage, any little bit can save your life. And as far as we know, there doesn't seem to be any sort of defensive perk in Battlefield 1, which is great news, honestly, because having sort of standardized kill rates in that game is very important, especially when you're trying to deal with multiple foes. If you don't know how many shots it's going to take to take down your enemy, it's very hard to transition from one bad guy to the next, which has always been an issue in Battlefield 4, and hopefully it will not be an issue in Battlefield 1. It'll allow top skilled players to really maximize their killing potential. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for today's episode of Loadout. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave your comments for next week's episode down below, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.